hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, you believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. We're not so loud that they're told. There is power in the name. I go to the fair place for you. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is power, there is power. Turn that down. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations before the mountains were brought forth and ever thou hast formed the earth or the world. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. The Lord is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble, therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea, there is a river, the streams whereof over here, make glad the city of our God. Eternal and gracious God, our Father, for the blessings of life, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Even in our darkest moments, when the shadows of difficult times in our lives are upon us, we still call upon you because you, we know that you are our refuge and our strength. We come today thanking you for this life, thanking you for this wonderful privilege we have to celebrate uh, Ivo Otiano's life and to thank you for allowing him to be with us these many days. Now God be with this family as we seek to turn our faces to you for strength and for comfort. Come in this place today God. Allow this not to be a show. Allow this not to be just an event but allow us to turn our faces to you because we know that's where all our help comes from. Be in this place. Allow us to feel your presence. Comfort us. Stand us up. For we ask it in your perfect and powerful and strong name. Join me in saying amen. amen. All right, choir, you can sing that.
Now we thank God for you and we thank God for your patience and uh, your presence here today. This program is going to proceed as you have it in your hand and we're going to invite those persons to come who have been identified who will do the Old and New Testament scripture, Dr. Stephen Hewlett of Sky Ministries and Dr. Michael Jones, the president of the Richmond City Council and pastor of Village of Faith. And then the prayer of healing by Reverend Emily uh, Crudes. If I'm murdering these names, you just have to forgive me. Prayer of comfort by Shane Schleschman, followed by a musical selection by our choir. I will be reading from the 121st Psalm as it is written in the New International Version. And it reads as follows. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and you're going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Good afternoon. First, giving honor to Pastor Dwight Jones, Dr. Jones, and his hospitality. Um, I want to bring you greetings on behalf of Richmond City Council as their president. As a council, we just extend uh, our condolences to the family and friends. Mental health should not be stigmatized the way that it is. And as a legislator, we've got to do more uh, to ensure protections and not just simply share thoughts and prayers. The Bible says that we ought mourn with those who mourn, and so that's why we are here on this day. We find the words of the Lord in the New Testament. Christ is indeed raised from the dead, but the first fruits are those who have fallen asleep. And in this 51st verse of this 15th chapter we hear the words listen I tell you a mystery we will not all sleep but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, the mortal will be immort immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up by victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God for he has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you family.
Most merciful God, Lord who watches over us, Savior from whence our help does come. With sorrows deep, in pain we weep for wounds too bitter to bear alone. For our brother Ivo, let us reach out to one another with hearts and hands, if you are so called, saying in response, heal us, Lord. As we pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Give courage to Ivo's mother, Caroline, to his brothers and sisters, family and friends near and far. Surround them with your love so that they may be strengthened to meet the days ahead. Confident in your goodness and in the blessing of the resurrected life, the blessing of eternal life for their beloved Ivo. Heal us, Lord. Comfort all who grieve or suffer from the weight of any sorrow, that they may lay their burdens down at your feet, knowing the consolation of your love and the gift of new life in you. Heal us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things that are beyond our understanding that we may believe and trust in your forgiveness, in your grace, in your eternal love, the love that has and will overcome the evil, injustice, and oppression of our days. Heal us, O oh Lord. For all who live with physical, mental illness, injustice, terror, disease, death, as their constant companions, have mercy upon us. Strip away ignorance, cruelty, and indifference towards these our brothers and sisters awaken from their slumber those who are in places of power of public trust. Strengthen those who spend their lives seeking justice, equal protection, and opportunities for all so that we may all stand against such foul forces and stand with you, O oh God. Heal us, Lord. Look with compassion upon the whole human family. Take away the arrogance, violence, and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggles and confusions to accomplish your purposes on earth so that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony and we may come to the vision of hope in our own time, to the vision that is God's dream, God's dream for all God's children, God's dream for Ivo. Heal us, Lord. Heal us, O Lord, for we, by you we have been healed. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. My name is Shane Schlesman. It's my honor to be one of the family's pastors. I love you all, and I know that true comfort today comes only from the Lord. And we surround you in this place because he surrounds us. Let's pray for comfort today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God, you know all things. You see all things. You know our hearts. You know our pain. God, we thank you that you sent your only son. You know the loss and the pain. Well, we thank you that your son's vision, that your vision was fulfilled in this place and is being fulfilled to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. 
provide those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. God, we thank you that your vision is being fulfilled in us. But God, come alongside us in this dark valley right now. Come alongside this family in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh God, that you would surround them with your love. I pray, O oh God, that you would surround them with your comfort. You said that you sent the Holy Spirit. You left it here as the comforter. So God, may your spirit of comfort fall on them now. God, for us as a community, I pray, O oh Lord, for healing to come. Through your justice, through your mercy, through your salvation. And God, I pray that as we remember, as we think of times past, that Lord, you would remind us that the kingdom of heaven is near. And so, God, we ask you to bind up the brokenhearted. And I pray, oh God, that your spirit would rest on this family and that your spirit would guard the hearts and the minds of theirs in Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to take this moment to uh, recognize all of the ministers that are here. Would you just stand? I want the family to see the clergy is with you today. Come on, let's thank God for the clergy. And you may be seated. I saw representatives from the governor's office, K. Cole James and Richard Cullen. I don't know they're still here or not, but we thank God for them. And from the National Action Network, we're delighted to have uh, staff members, Steph Barley and uh, Davis Toon and Rachel. Let's thank God for the National Action Network. And let me thank God for uh, First Baptist Church and all of our ministries that have done such a wonderful job today. Media, security, uh, doorkeepers, uh, music, and our diaconate. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy work day to be here today. And we thank God for you. You have done a marvelous job already, and we know that you will see us through. We also want to mention that Dr. W. Franklin Richardson, the chairman of the National Action Network, is present and he is going to introduce uh, Reverend Al Sharpton at the appropriate time. At this time, we're going to have a video tribute, I understand. And so if we could do the video tribute from the family, and that will be followed by Dr. Richardson, who will introduce Dr. Sharpton. God's grace, blessed to be 22 friends, come and go, but now stay down like my brother. I was lost doing the same old, from the chains, cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells are. Little kid, I used to rock the car, growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan, sorry if I lost you in my plan. Telling myself that this can't be true. Still here for everything that I've been doing. Getting harder, moving smarter, pay attention. You might learn something. You might learn something. Quit smoking, but now I want to burn something. Give it time, young boy, you'll be up and coming. Family first responsibility coming now. Family first responsibility coming now. 
Guys, girls, let the B-22 friends come and go, but no, stay down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains, cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the Wells Fargo. Little kid, I used to rock the cargo. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. Sorry if I lost you in my plan. Took a chance and I made a way. Blessed to see another day. In this world, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. In the valley of shadow of death, I got to pray. Lost my father four days for my birthday. When my mama gave me the news, I couldn't believe it. The only thing I could have did, I would have did Rest in peace to all our loved ones. May they never be forgotten. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but don't stay down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains because I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells are. Little kid, I used to rock the car. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. I'm sorry if I lost you in my plan. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but no one stayed down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells far go. Little kid, I used to rock the car, bro. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. Sorry if I lost you in my plan. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but no one stayed down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains, cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells are. Little kid, I used to rock the car. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. Sorry if I lost you in my plan. Telling myself that this can't be true. Still here for everything that I've been through. Hitting harder, moving smarter, pay attention. You might learn something. You might learn something. Quit smoking, but now I want to burn something. Give it time, young boy, you'll be up and coming. Family first responsibility coming, now you're running. Family first responsibility coming, now you're running. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but no one stays down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains, cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells far go. Little kid, I used to rock the car, go. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. Sorry if I lost you in my plan. Took a chance and I made a way. Blessed to see another day. In this world, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. In the valley of shadow of death, I got to pray. Lost my father four days for my birthday. When my mama gave me the news, I couldn't believe it. The only thing I could have did, I would have did. Rest in peace to all our loved ones. May they never be forgotten. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but no one stayed down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells are. Little kid, I used to rock the car. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. I'm sorry if I lost you in my plan. God's grace, blessed to be 22. Friends come and go, but no one stayed down like my bro. I was lost doing the same mode. Broke the chains cause I got bigger goals. Came from where the liquor store to where the wells far go. Little kid, I used to rock the car, bro. Growing up to be a man. If you my fan, be my fan. Sorry if I lost you in my plan.
our God is able. So many times across America, our communities are devastated by actions of intolerance and hate. And when those moments come, it's always comforting for us that there's one man who shows up. Who represents our defense and our hope. He doesn't even have to say anything, but he will. He's been present in multiple places where our communities have been devastated by injustice, by cold and cruel hearts. But when he shows up, he is the embodiment of our faith and our determination that things are going to get better. He shows up. And we believe that there is a pathway out of this darkness. He shows up. And there's a voice that is clear and crystal who interprets the pain and places the blame where it belongs. He is Reverend Al Sharpton. He is He's referred to as Mr. Civil Rights. He carries the legacy of the long journey of our forefathers and mothers who have been fighting for justice. And I'm happy today to, as chairman to say we are so proud of the president of the National Action Network for his articulation, his dedication, and his willingness to put things aside. Today was a very difficult day for him. But he left the television station in New York came, got on the plane, and came here fast as he could, and has to go back and do, but he came here to, to be with this family, to let them know that hope is not lost, to let them know that the future is brighter. And so it's my delight to present the president of the National Action Network, the one and only, Reverend Al Sharpton.
to the family of Ivo Otenego to his mother, Carol, his brother, and other siblings, to our pastor, former Mayor Dwight Jones, and to uh, Dr. W. Franklin Richardson, who introduced me, and to the Attorney General of Black America, Ben Crump. and to all of the clergy and you that are here. Let me say that when Ben Crump called me and explained to me what happened to Ivo, and I talked later that day to Carolyn and the brother, it seemed like a, another of a litany of ugly stories that we keep hearing. I thought about last night as we now watch people mowed down with weapons in Tennessee. And then now we here to say goodbye to Ivo. We've normalized too much in this country. I mean, we act like it's normal that nine-year-old kids get killed for going to school. We act like it's normal that a young man who wanted to build a record company, despite him having mental illness, he had a dream. And if he could dream past his illness, what is your excuse not to get structured where people that have mental illness can be dealt with in a sane manner? <laughs> then the videotape came out. I was already concerned, but when I saw the videotape and saw men that were sworn to enforce the law and others that were called upon to deal with the ill, and they began stacking their bodies on him. I know he had an illness, but what was wrong with them? Yeah. Ivo's family called you because he had a problem. But I come to Virginia to this, today to ask, what's your problem? I mean, what kind of sickness? would make men pile on a man that's already handcuffed and shackled. Did you think we wouldn't come and stand with them? Did you think you'd write some excuses on some paper and no one would look? Did you think he didn't mean anything to anybody but his mama? that no one would protest but his brother. No, I don't care what you thought. We're here today because all of us have some mentally ill challenges in our family, and this is not how you treat people. The disgrace was not Ivo had mental illness. The disgrace is how you treated Ivo. And you do it all over the country. All of us have people that are mentally challenged. The question is, why are law enforcement not equipped? 
to handle the mentally challenged. When you get a call, you should have people that know how to deal with mentally challenged. There ought to be parts of the departments to do that. But to tackle him like you're in a football field and to pile on him like there's no human life, you know he couldn't fight back. He was handcuffed and shackled. And if we sound angry, it's because we are. When they played the videotape, and you heard him rapping. It showed some talent there that if he'd been cared for rather than care less law enforcement, he could have been a shining example of how people, despite their challenges, can be productive anyway. But I want Carolyn to know that he's going to be used anyway as a symbol of no matter what the mental illness, we're not going to allow you to just treat us any kind of way. Well, you know, Reverend Al, he had a mental illness. Yeah, I do know. And I know there's some ill about people piling on a man shackled and handcuffed. I thought about Reverend Stephen Marshall was traveling with me and I were talking, I thought about in the book of St. Mark, ninth chapter, talks about, I'm gonna read just two verses, it says when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my, you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. As we were talking about this, Reverend Marshall, I was telling my daughter, I brought my daughter, Carolyn, Ashley, that this scripture reminds me of what you and your son face and the other siblings. Is that, first of all, there was this huge crowd waiting. And they say that the holders of the law were arguing, were debating Ben Crump. While they were arguing, there was someone in need in this big crowd. Now, what, the way I thought about that is, this morning on the front home page of Politico, they were talking about how your governor, Youngkin, has the material to run for president. Well, that might be true. I didn't come to be political. It might be true, might not be. But Youngkin can't be president if he can't explain his policies on the mentally challenged. I mean, on my study of Virginia structure, how you deal with the mentally ill comes under the purview of the governor. And before it's going to take more than you wearing on a vest and campaign and smile. When you got folk being stampeded by law enforcement in your state because their family wants them to have mental health stuff. Mr. Governor, on your way to wherever you're going in the future, 
What about Apple? We cannot have anybody not held accountable here. Read the scripture. I know that some of the press going to say, I came and made it political. I'm reading the scripture. They say the people, the people with the law. That's the judges, Reverend. That's the prosecutors, Reverend. That's the governor, Reverend. The people with the law. Well, argue. Y'all in the hospital. Rather than helping Ivo, y'all argue. And even the disciples arguing. And then Jesus showed up. And a man broke through the crowd. Why? Because he couldn't get help from the law debaters. Couldn't get help from those that claimed to be disciples. He couldn't get help from those that were supposed to be trained to heal with illness. Sometimes when those with authority and those with positions and those with titles won't help, somebody like Carolyn got to break through the crowd and say, my son, my son, has a problem. Will y'all help my son? Mental challenges are as old as the Bible. And people procrastinating and stalling and doing what is unruly is as old as mental health is. This story is Ivo's story that they want to ignore those that have a spirit that they did not put in themselves. This boy was not doing nothing wrong. This boy wasn't breaking no laws. This boy wasn't hurting nobody. He had a sickness and illness. And if you were not equipped or trained to deal with the illness, then you should not have showed up to answer the call. You answered the call. Now you got to be held accountable for what you did. We going to hold him down. We going to pin him to the floor. He's already now shackled and handcuffed. And you've been doing this various parts of the country to mentally ill people because you think they're less than. You think because they have some mental challenge, they can't talk against you. And if they did, nobody would believe them. You think that they can't speak through their illness. And you went too far this time. That could be my cousin. That could be your relative. Nobody in here don't have a relative that has a mental illness. But God let Carolyn's son become the symbol of this will stop. There's no excuses no more. This must end with Ivo. I cannot erase the pain you feel, mother. I cannot erase the tears that you have, brother. And long after the crowd is gone and the cameras are gone, y'all will have to sit and remember and explain to his nieces and all oh, what happened. But the one thing I can tell you is when the man in St. Mark broke through the crowd 
and say, I don't know why they can't help me. I don't know what they're debating about. But my son, Lord, has a problem. And explain the mental breakdown his son had. Jesus rebuked them. He didn't rebuke the son. He rebuked them. And say, what is, what is with y'all? Why are y'all allowing this to happen? Why can't y'all heal him? Why are you debating the law if the law won't heal him? Why are y'all arguing if you can't heal him? And I come to tell you that same Jesus will break through. Jesus will break through the debate. Jesus will break through all of the back and forward. Jesus will break through and hold them accountable. And Jesus will take the dream of your brother and make it a reality that he never would have known. His name will be heralded all over to stand up for the abuse with mental health. Everybody's going to be a star anyhow. He's going to be a name anyhow. He's going to have fame anyhow. You thought he was worthless. But Jesus said he's worthy. You thought he had no value. But Jesus said he's my child. You can't give life and you can't take life away. Jesus said I'll make him a symbol. Where people all over that deal with mental health will have to now check themselves. Because they'll say, wait a minute, you remember what happened when Ivo got killed? We better behave differently. You can be prosecuted and held accountable. There will be an Ivo law. There must be an Ivo law to protect those that are now even in mental health facilities that are treated wrong. Let them lay up in their hospital beds and don't wipe them down, don't feed them right. There must be an IVO law. You feed them when you get ready. You treat them like they are less than human. There must be an IVO law. When you respect those that are worthy of respect, and if you can't act like that, you ought not be in the mental health field. We come to stand with this family and to say the same Jesus that healed that young boy whose daddy brought him through the crowd. I believe that that Jesus saw Carolyn bring her son with her other son and said that he did no wrong. The, the way to handle mental health is not death. Calling someone in a mental health crisis should not be a death penalty. If the governor want to run for president, he got to go through Carolyn. And I'm not here to attack him, I'm here to challenge him. That we all need to quit posing and posturing and start serving our people. Serving people in their point of need. And this family needs to be served with justice. They need to be served with accountability. They need to be served with laws that in the name of Ivo that this does not happen again. Let it go forth in the state of Virginia that they teach the nation that this is inexcusable. He had an illness he should have been doctored to, not treated with brutality. I salute 
those that operated quickly. I salute the prosecutor that went immediately and charged those that are responsible. But it doesn't end there. Charging does not give you the trial. And we want a fair trial and a fair result. And just like we flew down to be with the family at the funeral. We'll be here for the trial. For y'all. For y'all be talking about this nice Reverend Al came. I'm not leaving not to come back. I want to walk in that courtroom with this family. I want to look at the jury. I want to look at those health care workers. I want all you ministers to go to court with us. We got to stand in Ivo's name. We got to stand in Ivo's name. We have to stand in Ivo's name. They say every generation of human and civil rights leaders face their challenge and their tax. Next week will be the 55th anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King. And his son and I will be calling for 60th anniversary march on Washington. A lot of people don't know, Carolyn, is that when Dr. King was killed, I was just 13 years old. I was youth director of the chapter of his organization in New York, it just started. When he was killed, he was unpopular. The polls had him down in the black community, saying he'd lost it and he, nonviolence is not what we wanted. Sometimes when you fight, you're not gonna be popular with everybody. But you don't fight for popularity. You fight for what's right. You know some folk going to take shots at you. We went to Memphis and dealt with Kyrie, and there were those that said, oh, there go Ben Crump again. There go Sharpton again. Yeah, there we go again. <laughs> and we know they're going to have it before we get out of this church. But somewhere God gave us a chance to stand up for folks like Carol. And as long as we do that, God will make a way out of nowhere. I told Martin III one night we were flying into a certain city and it hit me, Ben. I said, you know, Martin, your father won. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, I know he never saw his 40th birthday, was killed at 39. Left a beautiful wife and four children. Never saw any of you become teenagers. Never knew his grandchild, but he won. He said, well, why do you say that, Al? I said, because you remember how your mother used to show us pictures of him being dragged up the courthouse steps, prosecuted in the courthouse in Montgomery. He said, yeah. I said, do you realize that the third Monday in January every year, that courthouse is closed to celebrate your daddy's birthday. The judge can't come to work. Lawyers can't show up. Clerk can't open the court. The schools he couldn't go to in Atlanta, they closed to celebrate his birthday. Those that mocked him, the federal government closes down to celebrate a boy that grew up in the segregated South. Somewhere I read, if you lift me up, I don't care what they call you, just lift me up. I don't care how they scandalize you, lift me up. I don't care who don't like you, lift me up till I speak from eternity. So before you write your stories against Ben and I, 
listen to the song one of these days. I'm going to put on my robe. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell Trayvon's story. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell Eric Garner's story. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell Sean Bell's story. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell Ivo's story. I'm going to tell it in glory that I stood up anyhow. I stood up anyhow. I'm going to put on my robe and tell that story. To have our call to justice is a man that I feel has operated head and shoulders above in this time. I met him many years ago. There was a young man killed in a boot camp in Florida. And a young lawyer called and asked would I come down and help bring national attention to students at FAMU were marching. And it was a story in Tallahassee, but it hadn't broke out. And that's when he called and asked me to come. And I came. People will say that I come for publicity. That's exactly why I come. <laughs> Nobody calls me to keep a secret. Reverend Bonet, they call me so we can make some attention. Because you can't operate wickedness if somebody puts a spotlight on it. I, I learned that growing up in the hood in Brooklyn that if the lights are out, I grew up in the hood, and the lights are out, roaches will run all over the kitchen table. I told my sister one night that we had roaches, and she didn't believe it. And I went and woke her up one night and said, there are roaches all over the kitchen table. And she said, we ain't got no roaches. Leave me alone. I'm asleep. I, I kept shaking her. Finally, she got up, stumbled into the kitchen, turned on the lights, and the roaches was gone. Happened two or three times, and I figured it out. Every time she turned the light on, the roaches start running. So I made it my life's mission to work with Ben Crump and keep chasing these roaches with lights all over this country. I bring you the Attorney General of Black America, my partner in roach chasing, Attorney Ben Crump. Yeah, I give another great round of applause for my mentor, the Reverend Al Sharpton, the civil rights leader for the United States of America, who always answers the bell. And Reverend Al, I know you're busy. I know you're busy. But on behalf of Caroline Oku, on behalf of Ivo's brother, Leon Oching, on behalf of all his family and loved ones on this side of the ocean in the United States of America, and on behalf of all his brothers and sisters in Kenya, Africa, I want to say thank you, Reverend Al, for answering the bell for Ivo. I'm so honored to work with a great attorney who has been champion civil rights here in the state of Virginia for decades. Y'all, please give a round of applause for my co-counsel, a great lawyer attorney, Mark Crudis. It takes all of us coming together to fight for justice. And 
I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Kareem Ali, who has been with the family day in and day out every day, my investigator. Thank you, Kareem. And Reverend Jones, thank you again for opening up your cathedral to say that Caroline could come and give her son a respectable homegoing service. We would never forget that, Reverend Jones. And so the national call to action, and Reverend Al, it's a international call to action. Julie, people in Kenya watching us, right? Yeah. Because he is a son, not just of America, but a son of Africa. He's a son of Virginia. He's a son of Richmond County. He's a son of Henrico County. And so this national call for action, this international call for action is very simple. It is that when black people in America have mental health issues, we cannot treat them like criminal issues. The determinable factor, the determining factor of whether you live or die when confronted by the police, when you're having a mental health crisis, shouldn't be relegated to the color of your skin, whether you live or you face a death sentence. The national call to action is as Reverend Al Sharpton said from Virginia, Ivo's law is that we will treat our brothers and sisters who are dealing with mental health issues, won't be treated like criminals, but we can develop mental health courts where they will be treated like they have illnesses and not like they are criminals and degenerates not worthy of dignity and respect. I both deserve dignity and respect. And so we remember that Ivo's legacy won't be defined by them, but Ivo's legacy will be defined by us. We will get justice for Ivo. 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 And then just briefly, I say simply this, because it was not lost on me when Reverend Sharpton started talking about his mentor, Dr. Martin Luther King. And Attorney Crutus told me, you know, Attorney Crump, in two weeks, it will be the 60th anniversary of Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail, April 16th, 1963, is when Dr. King wrote that letter. And we must re remember, we must be students of history, especially since Leaders in states like Florida and other places, I don't know where, where y'all at in Virginia, but they trying to take away black history. So we got to remind people of black history every chance we get. And in that letter from the Birmingham jail, Dr. King reminded us, because you see, Reverend Al, we hear the defense attorneys already starting to come up with excuses for why they treated Ivo like they did, Miss Caroline, and we've talked about it. You know, they, they engage in the intellectual justification of discrimination. And they start to say, well, he was unruly. He was combative. Even though we haven't saw any of that on video, they say, take our word for it. 
And so they try to start justifying it. And they say, so technically, what we did was legal. And you scratch your head and you say, but he had handcuffs on his wrist. And he had leg eyes on his leg, Reverend Jones. And he was face down. And they piled on top of him. And my God, Councilman Jones, less than three years after George Floyd, why would any law enforcement officer put their knees on a man who is restrained and face down? But we see it on the video. And they stayed on them, Leon. Not one minute, not two minutes, not three minutes, not four minutes, not five minutes, not six minutes, not seven minutes, not eight minutes, not nine minutes, not 10 minutes, not 11 minutes, but almost 12 minutes. They stayed on him. And Reverend Ellis, they say he was struggling. He was struggling because he couldn't breathe. And they try to say, well, it's technically it's legal. So we go back to the letter from the Birmingham jail when Martin Luther King reminded us just because they say it's legal, that don't make it right. He said we have to remember when they were killing the Jews in Germany, they said everything Hitler was doing was legal, but that didn't make it right. When they had black people in slavery, they said it was legal, but that didn't make it right. They said segregation was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to George Floyd was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Breonna Taylor was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Tyree Nichols was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Botham Jean in Texas was legal, that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Terrence Crutcher with his hands up and shot him in the back. They tried to say that was legal. That didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Ahmaud Aubrey in Brunswick, Georgia. Reverend Al was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Eric Gardner was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to 14-year-old Tamir Rice was legal, but that didn't make it right. They tried to say what they did to Marcus David Peters was legal, but that didn't make it right. And brothers and sisters, Caroline and Leon, they try to say what they did to Ivo was legal, but we must all remind them what Dr. Martin Luther King said. Just because they try to say it's legal, that don't make it right. And that is the call for action and call to justice. And with that, Reverend Al, we're going to hear from his heartbroken mother, Caroline Oku, and his brother, his beloved brother, Leon Oching. And we're going to also have some of his family and friends come and join them, Jimmy Marshall, Alan Chapman, Millicent Yuji, and Zachary Weiss. Will you all please come and join Ms. Caroline and Leon to give expressions from his family and friends, the people who knew Ivo best. We will let his friends speak first, and then Ms. Caroline will be the last person to speak. So, Mr. Jimmy Marshall, if you would come first, God bless you. Bear with me, guys. Um, this is going to be tough. I'm also going to be speaking uh, on behalf of our coach, Robert Scott. <clears throat> I met Ivor in first grade, Tuckle Elementary School. He was one of my closest friends throughout high school, and though we grew apart after graduation due to us moving to opposite ends of the country, I'll always cherish our memories 
that I really want to share with you today. Everyone from elementary school to high school absolutely loved Davor. He was approachable, thoughtful, empathetic, and treated people with the utmost respect at a very early age. We played basketball together for almost 10 years, from rec leagues to high school and middle school, but mainly it was AAU with Virginia Warriors. With Asa, John, Luke, Jamie, Romeo, JD, Garrett, David, and Coach Scott, who was always teaching us about basketball or busing us around from practice or workouts to the endless AAU tournaments that we won all over Virginia. Ivor was the guy on the team where if the other team had a score that we couldn't stop, all we had to do was say, Ivor, get on him. And that was pretty much it. Ivor shut people down in defense and was nearly impossible to stop on the offensive end. And this is a testament to how he approached everything in life. Ivor's work ethic came to, when it came to sports was second to none. He was physically one of the strongest and most gifted athletic kids I'd ever played alongside, which included most of my college teammates in Northeastern. In middle and high school, I spent nearly every day with Avor, whether it was at practice, workouts, or summer just playing basketball all day in my backyard until it got so dark that we couldn't see. I miss and cherish those days, especially won't forget all the arguments about who made their first real dunk on a 10-foot hoop. <laughs> when we would finish playing in my backyard, I always remember my dad would ask us if we wanted some of his famous hamburgers, and Avor would look over at me, doing everything in his power, not to smile or give away his excitement, <laughs> But he would respond, yeah, sure, I guess I could eat. And then he would proceed to eat ten, a minimum of five double cheeseburgers in one sitting. <laughs> Avor was one of the funniest kids I've ever met. And having come from a different background from our teammates and friends, he had a different perspective of life and a refreshingly satisfying appreciation for the little things that mattered most. Avor had a special bond with my two dogs, Rocky and Jake, and would go out, out of his way and sometimes spend more time playing with them than he did with me. They both passed away within the last year. Jake actually passed away the same week Avor did, and that at least can bring me some sort of happiness to think about him playing with them now in heaven. I'll say it again, everyone loved Ivor, whether they were his good friends or classmates, everyone had a special respect for him due to who he was and how he made people feel. Coach Scott wanted me to share a few words, most of which I've already covered, but he wanted to share his last experience with Ivor, which shows truly who he was. Coach was taking Ivor to BJ's to help him complete a job application. And thank you, Coach, for the last words that he ever heard from Ivor. Thank you, Ivor, for all the great memories. I'll never forget your big smile and your infectious laugh. Rest easy, Ivor. I miss you, brother. Alan Chapman. Um, my name is Alan Chapman. I had the pleasure of being friends with a brother. I called him Brother Vo. Um, I taught him in Bible study. Um, he used to meet in a Bible study in our house. Um, uh, we helped him record one of his first songs, which you heard today. Recorded that in our house. And... Uh, he was a brilliant and prolific uh, artist, you know. Um, I had a lot of people who wanted to record music and sometimes you had to say, hey, hey brother, you do anything else? But uh, Brother Vo was prolific. We talked regularly about Jesus, music, and life as a black man in America. To honor him, I wanted to um, read and invite us to use our divine imagination of what I imagined the conversation Brother Vo had with Jesus as he arrived at the gates of heaven. I believe Brother Vo would have said, you know, hey, I came to another country from Africa at a young age, and Jesus would have said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo would have said, I had a mother and family who raised me up in the ways of God, and Jesus would have said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo would say, all I was trying to do was live a life and legacy that honored my father, and Jesus said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo said, I just try to live a life so that I can help bless my community and help my people who are suffering. Jesus said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo said, sometimes life will get so heavy, the mental anguish will drive me to my knees, but I did my best. Jesus would say, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo said, you know, 
On one fateful Friday in the midst of my crisis, I went from the company of my friends to the custody of some officers where it took a turn for the worse. I believe Jesus would have sighed and said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo would say, you know, they started saying I was a threat to their system, so they shackled my hands and shackled my feet, and they threw me in a prison without even giving me a fair trial. I believe Jesus would have said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo said, you know, the way they treated me and struck me and, and beat me and made it so hard for me to even breathe, I believe Jesus would have said, Brother Vo, me too. Brother Vo said, you know, my mama was crying and fighting and pleading for my life, but they didn't listen to her. There were so many people that just stood by and watched as I cried out for help. They even moved my body so my friends and family couldn't see what they did to me. They kept treating me as a threat when I just needed somebody to care. I believe Jesus said, Brother Vo, me too. And then Jesus would have said, now, Brother Vo, I died under a different empire than you did. But let me tell you something I learned in my 33 years of life in this system. This system will take your life, treat you like everything but a child of God. Take your life on a Friday, kill your character to justify their cruelty on Saturday. But let me tell you something, Brother Vo. They may try to end your life, but they can't end your legacy. <laughs> they may shackle the members of your body, but they can't shackle the message of your movement. Your family may be weeping on Saturday, but Brother Vo, let me tell you about Sunday. On Sunday, the same system that called you a criminal are going to have to say, surely this was a child of God because they tried to bury you not knowing you were a seed. And I imagine Jesus put his arm around Brother Vo, leaning closely and said, you see, every now and then my father makes somebody so powerful. So impactful, so full of love and creativity, so full of the power of God that even when this system tries to end their life, it only expands their legacy. This system may put this person in the ground, but they are only sowing a seed for global change. Jesus said, Brother Vo, I was a heavenly seed crushed by an earthly system in order to plant a brand new heavenly system on earth. I'm a seed of a kingdom where the last shall be first, where those who are mourning and in mental distress will be comforted and not crucified. I'm a seed where those struggling with, sin with sickness will be blessed and not cursed. Though this system crushed my seed on Friday, they could not kill it on Sunday. And I believe Brother Vo stopped and listened, reflected deeply like he always did, put that heavenly smile on his face, and looked his Savior in the, in the eyes and said, yeah, Brother Jesus, me too. Rest in power, Brother Vo. Thank you. Now, Millicent Yuji. Yuki. Thank you so much. I'm Ivo's second mother. I represent the family that is here from Kenya the family that is left at home. I flew all the way to come and attend the burial of my son. When Ivo was born, I was there. I took his mother to hospital that night and he cried when I was there and we celebrated because that is the only cry that is celebrated, the cry of freedom. And I thank God that he gave us a handsome young man. He was very, very handsome and energetic. At three years, he could ride on his BMX at full speed with all his hands and feet, on, with his hands on his chest and his feet on top of his BMX. He was daring. He could climb up and jump down as a toddler. As he grew up, he was a normal child. He was not mentally ill. But along the way, when he got ill, we loved him as he was. Because 
this body that we walk in is all wired together. You can get sick on the face, on the eyes, on the legs, in the stomach, and in the head too. And that does not make you less a human being. And therefore, as a family, we loved Ivo as he was. Because Ivo led a very normal life on any other occasion, except when he had bouts of mental disturbance. It, is, it was not a permanent thing. And he would go up to eight months, seven months with nothing and still do his things. He could drive. He could do everything like you and I. And I'm telling you, mental illness goes right into the palace. It is not only out here. Even in the palace, there is mental illness. It is biblical. In the Bible, there is somebody, there is a king who had bouts of mental illness. And he had to be calmed down through music. I thank God that Ivo got solace in his music. And as, as we say goodbye to Ivo today, I just pray that Ivo's life, Ivo's spirit may continue living. And internationally, even in my country, where Ivo's video, death video, has been played again and again in all media, in social media. It has trended because he is a son of the soil. And we care for him so much. And Kenyans are crying now, not only my family, Kenyans are crying and asking so many questions. Why? What happened? How? How could they do that? How do you fan a dead man? When you have pinned him down and made sure he didn't get oxygen, then you start fanning him. That is the most painful part of it. But I thank God that Christ is still on the throne. Whatever we go through, Christ is still on the throne for us. And may the life of Ivo be the ladder that many families that are handling children and adults who have mental illness will be able to climb up and show up because there are so many people who are suffering silently in homes. They are suffering. They've not been treated right, even in institutions. But I thank God that Ivor's spirit will live on. Fare thee well, my son. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and last, before we hear from his brother, Zachary Weiss. Hey, thank you. Uh, my name is Zach Weiss, and it's an honor to be up here to say a few words about Ivor with his family. I met Ivor in the, in the weight room at, at Douglas Freeman. I was a bench warmer on the football team, and Ivor was a star basketball player. And we, we instantly clicked. He was just such a down-to-earth uh, fun-spirited, funny guy, and we liked working out together. We had some classes together, and we got really close when Ivor joined the football team our, our senior year of high school. I, I like to think I had a small small part in convincing Ivor to come out. We were uh, far from the best team in the district, to put, it, to put it mildly, and it was amazing to watch a guy who, you know, hadn't played the game since a couple years at Western Wildcats football. Uh, he instantly became a star, and when I always, I always looked up to Ivor, I mean, physically he was twice my size, but as a person, um, I, I was just, I really respected and admired, despite him being just a star athlete, he treated everybody with respect. And he treated everybody like they were his brother. And he, he, he displayed a lot of humility that, that, I, that I really value. And we had a lot of fun. 
outside the football field as well, hanging out at Caroline's house, playing video games, just laughing. We were talking about um, before this, we would be, you know, driving to go get food. And what we did back in those days, you'd play a tune and we would go around the car, try to freestyle rap, and I was terrible at it. Some people were a little bit better than me, and Ivor was always really good. But we just had a blast doing it, laughing and giggling and just some really good times. And that's something I've reflected on these last couple of days. I'm really going to miss Ivor's laugh. He had a million-dollar smile. And, yeah, and I spoke with Caroline, and she told me that uh, we have to stay strong for Ivor. And when she told me that, I just had chills run through my body. And I know Ivor's with me today. And... He's a guy I know that could have accomplished anything in this world, and it's a shame and a tragedy that that got cut short. So I have to keep him with me and lead with my best and treat others with love and compassion each and every day because I don't know what others are going through. So thank you. Thank you, Zach. And Reverend Al and Reverend Richardson, just like 11 years ago when we told them if you want to know what Trayvon Martin would have become, you only had to look at his big brother, Javaris. Well, we're saying the same thing today in Virginia. If you want to know what Ivo was going to become, we have evidence in his brother, Leon, a successful entrepreneur, a family man. I mean, just brilliant and articulate. Let me tell you, Leon Oching, the big brother of Ivor, was the example what Ivor was becoming. Y'all, please give a round of applause for his brother, Leon. Thank you. I'm going to speak from my heart. I tried to work on a speech, but I couldn't do it. I just kept tearing the sheets off all night long. So I hope I can make you laugh a little bit amongst amongst other things. To me, Ivor was a big brother I never had. <laughs> to me, Ivor had a bright smile. To me, Ivor was a quiet before the storm. To me, Ivor was slow to anger and quick to forgive. To me, Ivor represented more than just a black man in America. He represented a black man in Kenya. He represented sisters in Kenya. To me, Ivo, Ivo's life gives me purpose. The community has responded graciously. Thank you. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you for dropping food off. Thank you for running errands. Thank you for your phone calls. Thank you for your emails. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support. The image of which I see here in front of me today is exactly who Ivor's neighborhood looks like. We're represented, and he loves all of you. So I want to introduce my mother right now, if that's okay with... I'm sorry. I'll introduce my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you can introduce your mother to hear Ivor. Please give a, a, another round of applause for Leon, who's been a pillar of strength for his mother and his family. And it, Leah, if you defer to me, I'll introduce this strong woman of God because that's what Caroline is. She said God will get the glory despite what those uh, people did to her son. And she has so many family members over in Africa who continue to call and ask her questions that she can't answer because to them, America is the great beacon of hope. And so we have to help Caroline answer these questions. We're not going to put that on her. Reverend Al and Attorney Krutus, we're going to answer those questions for the brothers and sisters back in Africa. What we want her to do is to be able to say to her son, I love you, and tell the world who he is. Miss Caroline Oku. Thank you.
Thank you, Reverend Al, for making your time to come and be with us today. It's an honor. I know you have a busy schedule, and we respect that you took your time and came down to Virginia. Thank you for all the clergy. Thank you for the community. Thank you for our friends and family. I take this opportunity to say goodbye to my son, Otieno. When I took my son to the hospital, this is not what I envisioned. I didn't think my son was not coming home. But son, this is where we are. And I'm sorry. Son, you are a great man. You are gentle and slow to anger. When attacked, you responded. You stood up against intimidation. You stood up against hate, racism, and microaggression. Anyone tried you, they ran up against something. You are a man. You loved your family, your dog, puppy, friends. You are a man of his words. And those who know him, those who know him know that. When Ivor told you he was going to do something, he did it. You didn't fake it, son. You are real. A true Sagittarius. You also are spiritually sensitive. Since you are a child, you never ran away from responsibility. Actually, when you are in elementary school, you shared with your friends. I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to buy a home when I grow up for my mother. And one of your friends, Esther Scott, asked you, Ivo, why do you have, why do you feel like you have the weight of the world on your shoulders? And your answer to Esther was, I'd like to be great one day. I thank God for the 28 years that he allowed me, daddy, and your big bro, Leon, to be your guide. You have shown us how to love, how to empathize, how to forgive, how to include You have shown us to stand up for what we believe in and to stand up for what is right. Son, you are a soldier. That's right. May your spirit lead us in this pursuit of truth and justice. I will miss your infectious smile and your big hugs. We will miss you dearly. But rest assured, as you fly in heaven with your God, you are not here physically with us, but we who remain, your family, your friends, and my team beside me, we will get to the bottom of what happened to you. Amen. We will step for you. We will walk for you. 
Ten toes down. Ten toes down. Rest in peace, my son. Shine on. Rest in power. I love you. And we'll always love you. Let, let me say before mother and brother and family join us in committing the body. This family and the families in Kenya that wants to come and stand with this family. Many of them could not come. And then there's going to be trials that they are going to have to go back and forth. There are going to be people asking them to speak at rallies. Reverend Toon, our field director, stand up as people want them all over the country. I want, I want people that are watching and live stream to help this family. National Action Network has taken care of the funeral and the burial. We're not asking for you to help there. We've already taken care of that. But I want you to support this family. Everything you give, if you go to GoFundMe page, will go to the family. The funeral's taken care of. None of it's going to a mortician. None of it going to us. It goes direct to the family. I don't want this mother to have to worry about how she's going back to forward to court or go to a rally or hear the relatives, how they're going to get from Kenya back, or the brother to have to go in his business to do it. You that are watching, you got the ability right now. Think about if this was your relative, you'd want somebody to help with the expense. So don't just cry for Carolyn, and don't just ball your fists up in anger. Open your hands and go to GoFundMe and support this family. Will you do that for us? May we close by hearing from their home pastor, Bishop Daniel Wainaina. Amen. On behalf of the Kenyan community, Dr. Jones, Reverend Al Shapton, Attorney Ben Crump, and also Attorney Mark Crudus, thank you. Thank you for showing us that we also matter. Amen. Amen. Thank you for showing us that we are also intertwined in this fabric called America. This is a place where we came with hope, we came with dreams, and we believe that those dreams can come to pass. I'm in front of you to just give a short uh, word of comfort. And I would like to say this, that when I was introduced to Ivor, I was introduced to him through my father, who is unable to be here because he's out of the country. And so he sends his apologies. When we went there, Ivo was headed to college. And so um, my father asked Ivo, what would you like for me to pray for you? And he said, I want to be great. Ivo knew that he will be great. Deep within him, there was something that was planted. Something that is not well-wishing. Something that is divine something that can only be given by God. He said, I want to be great. And so today, I want to just speak to you on behalf of what Ivo would say if he was the one holding the mic. Ivo was a person who valued life and relationships. He wanted to make sure that every person had a say around the table. 
And so that made him to always go against the grain. That made him to always make sure that if he sees somebody that is excluded, he would pull them in. He wanted to make sure that they treat every person just like he would want to be treated. And I believe that that is the most confounding thing in the mind of Ivor in the last few days of his life. Because he was wondering, as much as I have done my best to treat people fairly, why is this happening to me? Why is it happening to me? And actually, Leon, I've spoken with him a few times, and that is the same question that he was asking Leon. Why was I born this way? Why was I born this way? All I can tell you is this. That in the eyes of God, you might look at Ivor and not think much of him. But when he thought about Ivor Otieno, and he knit him together in his mother's womb, he said, Ivor, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your value does not come from any person. Your value comes from your creator. And that is why we have so many people around in this house, in this church. Because you know the value of Ivor, and you also respect the value of a life. And it is so intricate that I would like to share with you, in just five minutes, that the value of somebody's life is tied to your eternity. The Bible says that there was this lawyer like Tony Ben Crump who came and asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? To which Christ says, love the Lord your God with all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your body, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And why is that so important? Because God created them male and female. He created them in his own image. And so when you look over to the person to your right or to your left, they are created in God's image. Amen. Amen. And what I want you to know is this. They could have stepped on Ivo. They could have tried to crumple him. But if God would stretch out his life, it still held value. Second thing that he wanted us to know, and he would, if he was here, this is what he would have done. He would have asked for us to forgive one another. He would have wanted us to forgive. You see, forgiveness is a choice. And what I'm here to tell you is this, that forgiveness is the action of stopping being angry. And I know in our natural state it is almost impossible, but I want you to know that in God's supernatural state, he makes it possible for us. If you would like to honor Ivor, ask the Lord to help you with forgiveness. Ask the Lord to release it in your heart. Because the only thing that I can tell you is this. Even though he will give you the virtue to forgive, it doesn't mean that he will not come to bring justice. The Bible says... No good thing with I will hold for my people who are righteous. So for Ivor's family, I pray that if you need peace that surpasses all understanding, God will give it to you. If you need comfort, he will put it over your shoulders like a blanket to just make sure he defends you against the winds of anger, winds of despondency, winds of discouragement. But this is what he says. I will give you everything that you will ever need. But the one thing that I will not give you is vengeance. Because the Bible says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay the evil that is done. You need not to fight this battle. The Lord is saying to this family and he's also saying to the nation, I've got this. Let me step forward. Even if the law of justice does not give us justice, there is one that is above whose arm can never fail. Every person that will cry to him, he says that he will come through for them. Because in the Bible, in the book of Psalms 35, verses 10, I believe that this will be the prayer of Ivor from the grave. That with every bone in my body, I will praise him. Lord, who can compare with you? 
Who, will, who else will rescue the helpless from the strong? Who else protects the helpless and the poor from those who rob him? God will bring justice. And God will avenge the blood that is crying out to him from the ground. I'm going to ask Reverend Jones and Dr. Richardson to join us as we commit to the final committal of Iva. The family can go back and be seated as we do the final prayer of committal. Again, I hope you will support this family. And we all stand. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God to take out of the world the soul of our brother Ivo Otiano, we do therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust looking forward to the resurrection in the last days in the world to come when we will all be changed, changed by the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from, saying, from, from heaven saying unto me, Right, for blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their deeds do follow them. Amen. All right, and the family is going to be led out by the morticians. Choir, we're ready to go.